What's up guys and welcome to this video. This video is a monitor buying guide. It was all about helping you choose the right monitor for your individual application because of course everybody is different. There are loads of different monitors out there. If you went out and chose a monitor a couple of years ago that kind of wasn't really the case. It was pretty stagnant, we only had full HD monitors, a couple of them were slightly higher resolution at quad HD but buying one actually back then was pretty simple. Fast forward to now though, and literally everything's gone a bit mad. We've got 4K monitors, ultra wide monitors, G-Sync, FreeSync, loads of different things that have come out. So which monitor should you buy, and how do you actually get to the decision of buying that one? Well the first and most important thing to note is that you've got to be buying a monitor that's right for you. Everyone is different. What are you going to be using this monitor for? If you're going to be using it for image quality things, so like video or image editing, then you're going to be after something different than someone that just wants to play games and want to get the most out of their games. What's your budget like? What's your budget like to spend on graphics cards? All these questions will actually help you decide which monitor is going to be right for you. But on to the monitors. What is it that actually makes a monitor a monitor and what makes a good one from a bad one? Well, the first thing and really the most important thing about a monitor to know is its panel type. Now there are three main panel types, IPS, VA and TN. Now TN stands for Twisted Pneumatic. Now these are actually quite often the cheapest monitors you can get. They are very good at gaming. The reason for this is that they're pretty quick to actually refresh the image. In fact, they're quicker than any other monitor panel type. This means that you can get high refresh rates, so refresh rates like 120 or 144 hertz. You also got quite a low response time, which means that it's gonna be easier for you to play games without seeing any noticeable lag or stutter or anything like that when you're moving your mouse. That's not to say that you're gonna have a big issue with this on other monitor types, but definitely if you are wanting the fastest and most smooth and most responsive monitor, then TN is the only real way to go. But of course there are some downsides with getting a TN monitor. The main one being that the image quality just is kind of generally the worst out of the three panel types. The colours just are a little bit flat compared to the others. That's not to say that all TN panels are the same, they're not. If you get a really cheap TN panel, then it's going to be very different to some of the highest, most expensive TN monitors you can get. The Asus ROG Swift is the most expensive TN panel at the moment you can buy, and that's over £600 here in the UK, and that's a long, long way off the cheap TN panels that you can get for about 80 to 100 sort of pounds. So obviously it does differ from monitor to monitor. The other big problem with TN panels is that the viewing angles aren't very good. If you were to stand up and or just merely move your head from left to right, then the image panel will shift, the colour will shift and things will look different. And this can be quite jarring if you are either just moving about or if you've got someone else that's trying to actually look and see what you're doing. I'm sure all of you have been watching someone else at some point on their laptop before and you can't really see what it is and the colours almost look like negatives. That is literally just because the panel type is TN and the viewing angles aren't very good. Now the next panel type is IPS or in-plane switching. Now these are some premium monitors and generally are more expensive than their TN counterparts. Now the main advantage by having an IPS monitor is the fact that the image reproduction, the colour reproduction of the monitor is going to be better, again generally speaking, than that of TN or even VA as I'll get on to in a moment. The colours just are better, images pop and things just look a lot better. So that's games, images, movies, whatever you're watching, the colours are going to be better. But the problem is that they're more expensive and the refresh rates aren't going to be as high. You can only get 60 hertz unless you try and overclock it or get one from Korea or somewhere like that. Generally speaking, that's only available in 60 hertz. So if you are one of these people that wants a really high refresh rate monitor, IPS just isn't an option for you. Now the other big advantage to having an IPS monitor is the fact that actually the viewing angles are a lot better than pretty much anything else. The classic example are the Mac displays, the iPad displays, the iPhone displays, all of those use really high quality IPS displays and the viewing angles on them are very good. You only need to take a look at someone else's iPhone to notice that everything is going to be as it should. You're not going to have that laptop effect. Everything is going to look and can, well, just look generally very good from a long viewing angle. I don't know why it took me so long to actually say that. Now it's for these reasons that this panel type is best suited for anyone that is doing image colour work, 
so video editing or photo editing. Now that's for a number of reasons. The most obvious one is because the colors are better, it's gonna be more accurately a representation of what you're actually working with. If you're trying to edit photos and you're trying to do that on a TN panel, then you're gonna to need to oversaturate the colors to get it looking as you think's right, but actually it's gonna be very different to what it should be. The other thing is if you're working in a business, um, you're gonna have a lot of people trying to crowd around a monitor to actually see the image work you're doing when you're sharing off what you're doing and for that reason you're going to need the wide viewing angles. So that is a good option for anyone that wants colour work or someone that just wants their games to look really really good. If you can't render that many frames on a high FPS monitor then you're probably better off going with an IPS one anyway. Now the final panel type is called VA or vertical alignment. Now this is most commonly found in things like this, televisions. And that's just because their blacks are better than any other panel you can get. Again, generally speaking, if you have a bad VA panel, it's not going to be as good as a brilliant IPS panel. It's pretty much in between TN and IPS quality in terms of colour reproduction and viewing angles. If you imagine that this is TN and that is IPS, it's going to be about two thirds of the way, so it is going to be quite a lot better than TN, but it's still not as good as IPS. If you're looking at getting a really high quality television, then they're gonna be VA panels just because the blacks are kind of the most important thing for movie watchers. And of course that translates to monitors as well. Although VA panels aren't as readily available in monitors as they are in TVs, you are gonna get some really good VA panels, which is gonna be absolutely brilliant for if you're gonna be doing a lot of TV or movie watching on your monitor or anything really that uses a lot of blacks. The most, exam most, example, most obvious example of an application that looks brilliant is Limbo, as I'm sure a lot of you have played that game. If you've got a VA panel, boot up Limbo and it looks absolutely fantastic and better than any IPS monitor. Again, generally speaking, could dream of. The blacks just are that good. But again, it's not really the sort of thing that you'll find that often, so you're probably more likely to be choosing between an IPS or a TN panel. And that's it for panel types. Make sure you understand what they do, why they're better than other types, what their disadvantages are, what their advantages are, and that's your best way to make an informed decision of what monitor you should go for. But of course, panel type is only half the story. The next one is resolution. Now this is the one that the PR people, the manufacturers, just everyone will be telling you that resolution is the most important thing. And that's actually only because it's the easiest thing to market. It's easier for me to say, hey look, this panel's got more pixels than this one, it's better than this one. But that might not be true at all. Resolution is very important, it's how resolved the image is, it's how many pixels are in an image, the higher the better. But just because you've got more pixels, it doesn't mean that your monitor is better than another one. That's just not how it works. But generally speaking, if you have two panels that are exactly the same, literally everything about them is exactly the same except for resolution, then of course the higher resolution is going to be better. So if you're looking at getting a monitor, there's going to be three main resolutions you're going to be looking at. 1080p or Full HD, 1440p or Quad HD, or 3840p, which no one says, more commonly known as 4K or Ultra High Definition UHD. Now, the higher the resolution, the better, but the higher the resolution, the worse. Is that how you say it? The worse, maybe. Basically, the higher the resolution, the harder it is for your computer to actually drive that panel. Especially for games, GTX 980, even the overclocked one I've got in my machine, cannot run all games at 4K at 60 frames a second. In fact, it can't run most of them at max settings at 30 frames a second. Literally, if you want to have a 4K gaming machine, you're going to need a lot of graphics horsepower. So if you want to get a 4K monitor or a high resolution monitor, make sure you've got the graphics power to back it up. The same goes for if you're doing image quality work as well though. Obviously not to the same extent, but you're still going to need good quality components, so a decent processor and a somewhat decent graphics card or APU or whatever it is you're using. It's going to need to be able to drive those pixels and you'll probably need a good SSD and things like that as well. 4K, you need better components. It literally is as simple as that. Now this alone makes 4K very expensive and you will also be paying for the premium in the first place as the monitors and the TVs are more expensive than their Quad HD and Full HD counterparts. So if you're on a budget, look at getting a decent quality IPS or VA panel over a really good high resolution one 
because it is kind of a more sensible option at a decent amount of money, so for a decent budget. Now there's one more thing to mention in this buyer's guide, and that is all about adaptable refresh rate. Now you're probably wondering what this is, it's because it's not really known as this. Well the term adaptive refresh rate is actually what the screen is doing. You probably know it as either G-Sync or FreeSync. Both of these are technologies that allow an adaptive refresh rate. Basically what they do is they get your image that's coming out of your graphics card, so we'll just assume it's a game as it's the easiest to explain. If your graphics card is sending 60 frames a second out to your 60 frames a second screen, brilliant. Everything's nicely in sync and it all works. The problem is when you drop below 60 frames a second, uh, you can start to get some tearing or stutter. You'll get stutter if you've got vSync enabled. What vSync does is it makes sure that the timings between uh, when your graphics card displays one and when your monitor displays one are the same. That means that your images are never going to be out of a line. Um, so your monitor will do that. It will scan an image. If the image, however, gets changed because the timings are out of sync, so it will get scan, scan, scan halfway down the monitor, then your GPU has got a new frame ready. It pushes it to the monitor, but this one hasn't actually finished drawing the first one in the first place. So it continues drawing, but from the next frame which is why you get the tearing. So you have one man that's half there, and then he's half there. That's literally just because, okay, the panel is still drawing the frame, but your GPU has got another one ready halfway down the frame. So that's why it goes from there to there. And I think that's probably the easiest way of explaining it. Having an adaptive refresh rate eliminates this completely, as both of them are synchronized with each other properly, and you won't get any stutter or any tearing. Now monitors with these technologies in at the moment aren't really available at all. They're pretty sparse. FreeSync at the moment, nothing available. That will change within a month. I can imagine at CES, boom, loads of FreeSync monitors. NVIDIA G-Sync, it is available, but it comes with a separate module built into the screen. And then they charge you a premium for that. And of course, the fact that this is a new technology, so they charge you for the R&D of the product. That said, if you want to be gaming, G-Sync is pretty much the best way to go at the moment if you want the smoothest experience. So then, what do you actually buy? Well, actually, it's fairly simple. You just need to do some research. I could go off and I could say, the ROG Swift is the best gaming monitor out there. Go and buy it. Well, that's not really going to help you if you play a couple of games, but you're mainly an image editor. The easy way to get around this is to buy two monitors and then you can have two of different panel types and get around it. But for most people, a single monitor is the way to go. You can get an ultra wide monitor as well. So one that's not like that, it's like that. And you, it's gone out of frame, so yeah, but it, it's wider. That's the point. Um, the monitor is wider so you can fit more on it. So that is one option if you want to do movies or you just want an ultra wide field. But for most people, you need to do your research on the panel types and work out what is going to be best for you. If you are an image editor or you want everything on screen to look amazing, you're going to want an IPS, ideally, or a VA if you're going to be doing a lot of movie watching. Or if you just want really smooth games, then you're going to have to go for a TN panel, and you're going to want a TN panel with a high refresh rate, and ideally G-Sync if you've got an NVIDIA card, or FreeSync if you've got an AMD card. It is kind of sim as simple as that. You just need to know what you should be buying. So just go and research the product. If you want me to recommend some monitors, then stay tuned as there'll be a separate video going over the best monitors in different categories in a week or two. So it's ready for the holiday season. And other than that, there's not that much left to say. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope really help. Oh, I was trying to say help and hope at the same time. It didn't really work. I really hope this video has been helpful. Um, and if it has, obviously, please give this a like. And if it hasn't, give it a dislike. But either way, let me know what you liked or disliked about it and whether you actually have got a better understanding of what different monitors are and the different sorts of ones that you can buy. So thank you so much for watching this video. You'll probably notice that I've got two cameras going on here. What's going on there? Well, I thought I'd try something a little bit different. And so if you could let me know what you thought of having two different cameras, that would be incredibly useful and helpful. And that way I can obviously make sure the content is optimized for next time. So thank you so much for watching this video. And until next time, I will see you next time. I say that every, every single time. I should get rid of that. That's a rubbish phrase. I'll see you in the next video. That, that's better, isn't it?